Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dungeon Dive. Daniel here, I hope you're doing well, and if you're not, I hope you are soon. Okay, today in the Dungeon Dive, we are uh, returning to Hero Quest, and this is part two of a three-part series. And in this episode, we will be discussing the new expansions from the uh, Hasbro slash Avalon Hill re-release of Hero Quest. So in the first episode, I talked a little bit about my lack of history with Hero Quest, how I'm kind of uh, approaching this game with new eyes, and I wanted to examine the game as kind of a due diligence as being uh, somebody who started a, dun a Dungeon Dive YouTube channel. I thought it was something that I should learn about. We took a look at the two base games, and then we'll take a look at these expansions, and I'm going to uh, look at them in the release order. So we'll start with Keller's Keep, and then we'll go to Return of the Witch Lord, and then Frozen Horror, uh, Mage of the Mirror, and we'll end with Rise of the Dread Moon. And I'm going to be kind of evaluating these based on how I play Hero Quest solo. And I'll talk a little bit more in detail about how I play solo in the next episode, in episode three of the Hero Quest series. But uh, just really quickly, I don't like playing Hero Quest solo with the app. I find that I'm in the app too much. The app is basically the entire game. I like to play Hero Quest solo with some random dungeon generation charts that I found on BGG. And we will go into that in the next episode. So let's get right to it and start looking at uh, these expansions. Because, yeah, there's a lot of stuff. Now, one of the uh, cool things about Hero Quest is just buying this stuff. It's these are really fun games to unbox because they have a big wow factor as far as the the, the, the toy factor goes. However, these two expansions, the first two, Keller's Keep and Return of the Witch Lord, if you uh, are looking into get if you're looking to get into Hero Quest in the way that I play it, the way I play it solo. I actually do not recommend either of these. I don't think these add very much to the way I like to play Hero Quest. So uh, I am. it's super cool, though, that these are back in print and people can now buy them without having to take out a third mortgage on their house. I mean, these things sell, the, the originals sell for ridiculous amounts of money used. Uh, I think these go for like even more money than some of the Warhammer Quest stuff, which yeah, it's pretty crazy. If you have an original collection of Hero Quest, uh, yeah, you could probably put your kids through college in a few years on that thing. But uh, here we have here we have a uh, Keller's Keep. Let's read a little bit about this. Uh, the king is trapped in the forbidding recesses of Keller's Keep, a subterranean vault deep within an ancient fortress. But the key to his secret location is found only in the fragments of a map hidden far underground. The heroes must make their way through eerie passages to reach the king and Keller's keep before Zargon and his evil forces do. And so there is a listing of everything that you get in this expansion. And this right here, I think, is kind of the big problem with these smaller expansions, because while they come with a bunch of plastic, it's all just repeats of things you already have. And I also think this points to another kind of one of my main issues with Hero Quest is that the bestiary is just really boring. And instead of making the enemies more interesting to fight, what they do in the harder quests is they just start piling a ton of enemies into the dungeons and it makes the combat really sloggy i mean look at how <laughs> look at how many enemies zargon is supposed to place in this dungeon and the heroes are here and they are just going to go in a line like a like an assembly line of death and uh instead of adding more enemies i would have rather have seen them maybe have a few special enemies that came just in this set that were just more interesting to fight more interesting to encounter had more interesting things that zargon could do with them and more interesting ways for the heroes to deal with them but instead they just add a whole bunch of stuff that you already have so you get your abomination minis you get some more orc minis and some more goblin minis so just a lot of duplicates you do get two new doors. One's an entrance door and an exit door because in these quests, 
basically you no longer start on that spiral staircase. Zargon will put these on the uh, map for an entrance and an exit. And then so the heroes have to go through the entrance and then make their way to the exit. And that's usually how they will uh, you know, win each quest. However, the, some of the cool things with these smaller expansions are some of the board overlays and they come with some cool things. Uh, one thing that this expansion does come with that I think you could use for a, a kind of a solo quest are these four pieces of this map and it's kind of like a little puzzle. So you could you could come up with some kind of neat little uh, neat little quest for yourself to uh, solve this puzzle and you can look for these four pieces of a map. I mean, it doesn't really do anything game wise, but it's kind of thematic. So that's kind of cool. You get this, uh, what is this, a darkness token, I believe, some kind of spell, the Cloud of Dread. So you could put the Cloud of Dread in a room and that prevents the heroes from seeing what is in the room. You also get this cool Dwarven Forge. So you could use that as some kind of quest, uh, a, an objective room where you're looking for this Dwarven Forge in order to interact with it in a certain way. You also get some stairs that are going up and down, so small stairways, so you could put stairs in a corridor. There's not really any gameplay uh, mechanisms with these, but again, you could just add a little bit of variety to what is going on on the map. You do get a cool little statue token, and I do like these trap door tokens. So trap doors, if you place a trap door in one room and then another trap door in another room, those two rooms are now adjacent and the heroes and the monsters uh, can move back and forth between those two rooms. So that's a cool way to make your own dungeons a little more unique. And that's basically the cardboard that you get in Keller's Keep. Um, yeah, so this is probably my least favorite of the of, of the expansions. Especially with the way I play solo, I just don't think it adds enough for me. You do get a few equipment cards and a few artifact cards but they're not very exciting. The equipment cards you get is a potion of battle, a potion of dexterity, a potion of restoration, and a venom antidote. Uh, potions are, in any kind of RPG, potions are always my least favorite uh, kind of quest reward, uh, kind of loot, especially when they're just one off and they basically you use them to add a die, to heal one, to heal uh, two, uh, maybe uh, roll one for an extra attack or something like that. I don't know. Just potions never really excite me. And I think these potions are pretty boring. Although that potion of battle is pretty nice. It'll, it allows you to reroll your attack dice if you miss. So that can definitely come in handy. You do get a few new artifacts though. And you get a fire ring, magical throwing dagger. So you can use both of those. And then you also do get some spell scrolls. And these are cool because these are spells that any hero can use if they have this spell. So this is kind of cool. And I think you could also use these in a solo game if you were to play how I play, just kind of a random dungeon mode. You could use these to uh, make the wizard a little more powerful by giving them maybe uh, like two of these at random at the beginning of a quest in addition to their normal uh, spells that they start with or something like that. So these are probably the most useful thing for me in this entire box set. And the quests themselves, again, I don't play with the app, so I don't have a big use for the quest book. However, if you're playing Hero Quest or Rules is written uh, straight out of the box, then you will get a lot of use out of this quest book because you get, uh, what is it, 10 or 12 new quests, I believe. Uh, let's see here. You get 10 new quests and the quests seem pretty cool. I've read through this quest book. The quests are interesting. There's some neat things that go that go on, some neat things for the heroes to discover. Um, again, I did want to point out one thing though with uh, the, the problems with the bestiary, the problems with the enemies being boring in Hero Quest is uh, you have this, uh, this quest to the warrior halls. And in room A here, you have uh, Zargon may tell the heroes that these four dread warriors. So there are four dread warriors here and there one is in each corner. Uh, these are actually enchanted suits of armor. They were used centuries ago to test the fighting skills of dwarven warriors. They have the same stats as real dread warriors. Okay, why didn't they take this opportunity to add something special to this encounter? You know, they could have just uh, maybe had them re-roll missed attacks or, or had them re-roll missed defense rolls or give them something that makes them different than the Dread Warriors. Why are they enchanted suits of armor? 
Now, the more astute uh, Hero Quest players are probably screaming at their screen right now because that kind of thing is really up to Zargon. It is really up to the DM player controlling Hero Quest to add that kind of stuff to the game. And I think that makes sense back in 1989. However, now uh, Hasbro and Avalon Hill, they know that there is something like what 30 plus years of people who have been changing hero quest to make it better and they could have taken that opportunity to add some of their own uh their own rules their own unique spin on the encounters in the game and i i personally would have appreciated that because while there are people who have been playing hero quest for 30 plus years for their entire life i don't think there's anybody who has played it for more than a few years or maybe more than a few sessions without adding house rules and without changing things. And so even the people who love Hero Quest, they don't play it by the rules. They have stacks and stacks of paper and cards where they all have their own things. And if you want a really good example of what I'm talking about, go to Google and search for Hero Quest, what is mind? And you will see like 12 different ways that people use the mind stat in hero quest so just really interesting i think you could do a you uh, an interesting case study on the development of hero quest house rules i think that would actually kind of be an interesting nerdy book to write but here we have return of the witch lord so this is the second of the small box expansions and the cruel witch lord survived the great battle and sought refuge in his subterranean fortress Soon he will have recovered enough strength to lead his mutant army in a vengeful attack against the realm. You must journey across the barren lands and confront the Witch Lord. Beware, his fortress is filled with legions of vile monsters and deadly traps. Well, actually, it's filled with the same skeletons, zombies, and mummies that you already have in your base game. Again, this box here just comes with a bunch of the same plastic that you already have. A very, very big disappointment. You know, this is a, an undead themed expansion. Instead of four or instead of eight skellies, four zombies and four mummies, what if they had four special like tomb guardians or these these uh, more special uh, undead skeletons that the enemy that the heroes could have faced off as special encounters, as special like like a gauntlet or something like that. There are so many ways that they could have made these small expansions much much better. Uh, so yeah, you'll get the same in, uh, enemies that you already have. You will get another entrance and another exit door. Now this expansion does come with a cool tile that uh, actually two cool tiles that I think could be really useful to the solo player, especially for establishing some kind of theme or some different rooms, maybe an objective room. So if you were going to uh, face off against a boss, you could overlay that as an objective room and have something cool happening in here. Uh, this is a rotating room, so maybe the heroes enter here and it rotates and then they're trapped. They can't ever exit out that way again. So these two things are super cool to add some uh, uh, variety, some thematic variety to your solo games. I like that. And then you do get a couple little small tokens here that you could always use for something. These uh, special coffins here could definitely be used for some kind of solo quest. So I do like the, the cardboard components of this expansion. And those are probably the main things that I will use. Once again, the equipment is kind of boring here. We have a potion of battle, potion of dexterity, potion of restoration, and venom antidote. Uh, the same potions, I believe. That is that is unfortunate. They could have added more potions, definitely. And then you get some artifacts. You get a anti-poison uh, quill, the armband of healing, uh, the dust of disappearance, a magical throwing dagger, rabbit boots, then a few spell scrolls. So these artifacts are definitely the most useful thing in this box in the way that I play solo. And once again, though, if you are playing rules as written and you are playing one versus many, uh, you will get another 10 quests. And this quest book does seem pretty interesting. There are a lot of things. But again, what they just ended up doing with the boring enemies is they just started adding more and more and more enemies to the encounters. And I mean, look at that room. That is, that's just way too many enemies. This kind of encounter, I think, would be way more exciting if it was fewer enemies, maybe half of those enemies, but each one of those enemies 
had a, a special ability and something special that they could do that could really trick up and wow the heroes and make the heroes think outside of the box rather than just standing at doors and swinging away. But I, I know that people really do like these uh, these. Uh, campaigns and it does continue the story from the original hero quest okay so now we will take a look at the frozen horror quest pack and this is where i think base hero quest starts to get more exciting and more interesting i think these big box expansions are pretty cool and they come with some neat things and man they are they are a lot of fun to unbox because of the cool stuff that you get so already just this box, how it's icy, the, the ice theme, they, they've created that on the box. They've duplicated that on the box. I love that. A lot of the minis are blue to show that they're icy. That is super cool. So this is the frozen horror has burst forth from the icy tomb where it rests, where it rested these last centuries, recovering its strength and awaiting Zargon's summons. At last, that call has come, and the raging beast has returned to its ancient seat of power deep within Ice Mountain. As we speak, it is rallying its minions and mobilizing its plans to cover the Netherlands, to cover the Northlands and the realm in a shroud of deadly ice. Barbarian, you must call on courage and skill. You did not realize you had to confront the evil of the frozen horror. So this is all about the Barbarian. This particular expansion focuses on, on the Barbarian. And the quest in here, it's, it's kind of weird, but the quest book here, the first three quests are solo quests for, or a two-player quest, one player being Zargon and one being the Barbarian. A little weird to me because, you know, if you had friends that you were playing Hero Quest with, you've gone the base game, you've gone through... Uh, the, the two other expansion campaigns and then you get to this campaign and you're excited. You call your friends over and you're like, well, actually, uh, just the barbarian should come over for the first uh, first four hours. So the barbarian can go through the three solo quests first. I don't know, just a little weird, but it is kind of cool. If you only had, you know, if, if only one of your friends could show up to play, then you could play through that those uh, solo quests. But uh, this uh, can this box comes with a lot of cool things. And it comes with a lot of cool tile overlays. Now, I have had uh, DIY prints of these tiles for a long time that I have used in Advanced Hero Quest. And these can be added for all kinds of neat little solo, uh, it, it, solo quests that you want to make up. You can have, you know, your treasure room or this could be some kind of trap that the... Uh, that the heroes have to escape from here. You could push enemies down into that pit there, or maybe uh, this room here, you have to navigate around these, uh, these frozen bear things. I don't know. There, there's some really cool art on these tiles that could really spark your imagination to create some cool quests. One of the things that I did in advanced hero quest is I would use these as, as these were these uh, demons in the floor. And in order to unlock the doors of this room, the heroes had to attack each one of these demons or something like that. Again, maybe you have to jump over this to reach a door on the other side. And here we have this frozen throne room, which is super cool. That is also a, a really neat kind of objective room. And then here we have this outdoor area area that you could use to uh, maybe be a new entrance tile or something like that. One of the really weird things that Hasbro did in a lot of these is they put this uh, uh, copyright and trademark information on the tile, really kind of as a, I don't know, sticks out like a sore thumb on this cool piece of art. Very weird. And then you get a, a couple of smaller uh, tiles here for these uh, icy floors, and these will cause things to slip around. These are kind of like ice traps. And then you do get this cool ice slide where if a hero lands on this space then they will slide down and usually they will land in some kind of trap down at the end of the hallway. So that, that's kind of cool too. And then this uh, to continue looking at this expansion. Yeah, this expansion is cool. You get some really nice uh, blue dice that are really crammed into this box. Uh, <laughs> But just to kind of, uh, I don't know, just to sell that icy theme, you get really cool, unique custom uh, D6. I love these, really nice, uh, very chunky, just as, as good of quality as the new dice from the new set there. And then you do get quite a few cards. So uh, this is cool. 
here we get a female barbarian. So if you have a player who wants to play a female barbarian, you get a new mini for that. That is awesome. I love that. And then we do get some new enemies here. So let's take a look at the enemy cards. So we do get our frozen horror. And this is a cool enemy. He's a spellcaster and a melee guy. So kind of a, a uh, kind of a battle mage uh, style beast there. Really cool mini. Uh, they did a really good job with that guy. And then we get a Yeti. And so the Yeti is under here. So there is our Yeti mini. <laughs> I like that Yeti uh, looks like he's in Spinal Tap or something. And then we get a Polar War Bear. Uh, these guys are pretty sweet here. And then we get some scouts, a swordsman, and a halberdier, and a crossbowman. And these can be human enemies, and they can also be mercenaries that the heroes can hire to help them on their quests. I like the dual purpose of these minis and these, uh, these uh, characters here, because they can be enemies or friends. And so here we have, uh, man, these are really packed in there. Again, I'm going to get rid of all of this packaging and recycle it and put everything that I can into the uh, the base game. And I think that's how my, my Hero Quest collection, anything that I can fit in my base game box, that's what I'll keep, that's what I'll buy. But here are the minis for those. Here we have the Halberdier there and the Swordsman. And what is that? The uh, Scout there and then the Crossbowman there. Pretty cool. And then you also get another giant uh, book of, of uh, character sheets. So yeah, they definitely supply the players with a lot of character sheets in these expansions and, or in Hero Quest. And then you also get some smaller tokens, uh, some small ice pits, some small ice uh, floor traps, some kind of polar vortexes there and some more uh, damage tokens. And then uh, finally here we have the Ice Gremlin and the Ice Gremlin. Uh, these guys are pretty nasty because they can steal items from the players. And, uh, you know, you could spend a lot of money on an item and then this little Ice Goblin comes along and just steals the item from you and vanishes. And hey, that 500, uh, that item worth 500 gold is gone. So you get a few equipment cards, new equipment here. We have the Potion of Battle Rage. Potion, hey, look, it's some of those same potions too many potions in hero quest we don't need we don't need this many potions uh the potion of icy strength and the potion of frost skin uh ranging in price from 200 to 500 gold coins we get some new treasure cards and these treasure cards are just meant to shuffle in with your original deck from the original set so we have some poison some potion of magic resistance a potion of warmth and again a potion of warmth so some boring treasure there but the artifacts are cool so you get a whole bunch of new artifacts and we get the amulet of the north the ring of warmth the armband of ice the snowshoes of speed the spell scroll uh, so you get chill ice storm ice bridge psychic recovery skate and warmth so you get some new spells that any hero can use if they find the scroll and then you also get some new dread uh, spells and these are all ice themed dread spells so these are new spells for your enemies for zargon to cast on the heroes we have chill ice wall skate ice storm mind freeze and soothe so a, a good number of cards here i'm pretty happy with the number of cards those new artifacts are really nice. I think the new tile overlays are cool. The new enemies are interesting because really for the first time here, we do actually have some interesting monsters that have some interesting things to do rather than just attack and defend. So I like to see this. This is addressing one of the problems I have with Hero Quest is the boring bestiary. Really cool. And so here we have our, our quest book. We have the different things that they, the equipment that the heroes can buy, those new potions in the alchemist shop here, and then how to use all of your new tiles, your new tile overlays, and what those do when they are on the map. And here we have in the third expansion, it took us all the way to the third expansion to finally figure out what the uh, rules as written mind points should be used for. I don't think mind points are mentioned one time in the base system. We'll talk a little bit about some alternate ways you can use mind points when we get to the next episode. 
But again, if you want to see just how creative people have gotten with HeroQuest, Google HeroQuest, what is Mind? And you'll see a whole bunch of examples of different ways to, to make Mind uh, more valuable and more useful. But yeah, the quests seem pretty cool. Again, those first three quests are just for the Barbarian. So they're kind of like a prologue for the Barbarian. And then on quest four, we get into the group quests. And as you can see, the quests start to get quite a bit more complicated. And I think the quests here, they do require Zargon to be a little more on the ball. I mean, look at how much stuff is going on in this quest. And I think this is really where the rules as written hero quests start to get more interesting. And I think I actually would like to play through these expansion quests using the app because I think these look pretty interesting. Although again, I would probably change up some of the enemy encounters just to make the combat and just to make the encounters a little more interesting rather than just facing off against a whole bunch of, I mean, that room, you know, those two rooms there, that's just ridiculous. That is, all that's doing is really slowing down the game because of all of that attrition there. You're just uh, standing in corridors and rolling dice and none of these guys are really doing anything interesting to you. But that's just that's just my opinion on hero quest there. But and then here we have our stats for the mercenaries too in case Zargon needed to use them as additional human enemies. Okay, next up, we will take a look at the Mage of the Mirror. I, I really do like this new art for HeroQuest. I know there are a lot of people who complained about it looking too video gamey or too uh, modern or something, but I think they did a fantastic job. If you want to uh, read a really interesting kind of history of modern HeroQuest, go to the Ye Old Inn and look for the 300 page thread about the announcement that Hasbro made and Hasbro and Avalon Hill made of the new version and follow that thread from the original announcement all the way through today. Let me tell you, you will see some absolutely wild comments. You will see some fans who absolutely love it, who love everything they did. Uh, the, the, I think those are like the real fans, the fans who appreciate, the fans who know uh, what Avalon Hill, what they were doing in reintroducing this game. And then you will see a lot of people who are very mad about every about every little change they made. Um, somebody, I was reading one comment today and somebody was really, really upset that they had a female elf in the base game. Like it made him like not want to buy uh, the game for, for some reason, yeah. But it's a really interesting kind of snapshot of the Hero Quest community and how loyal and how uh, kind of just am really into the game they can be. But let's take a look here at the Mage of the Mirror quest pack. So this is really interesting. This box actually had a very elaborate fold over cardboard uh, sleeve thing that actually had the pictures of what you get. And the actual box is much different in this expansion. And I'm not sure why. And this is that the mirror is the key to saving Princess Melandriel and the realm from evil. And this exciting expansion to the Hero Quest adventure, you are challenged uh, to confront the diabolical archmage Sinestra. As the elf, you must first survive dangerous solo quests to prove your strength and valor before you are joined by your fellow heroes to rescue Melandriel. You will recover a legendary sword, free two of the queen's attendants, and navigate safely through a treacherous maze. Only then will your fellow heroes join you to gain access to Glenys, Finn, and pass through the mirror to the realm of reflection to free the princess. So like the frozen horror, the how it focused on the barbarian, this expansion focuses on the elf. And in this quest book, the first three quests are solo quests for the elf. And this expansion actually comes with a male elf that uh, your hero player could play if they want to play a male elf because the elf in the uh, new original box set is a female elf. So super cool. I love this. I love the options that they give you in this new game. You do get a couple cool pieces of cardboard here that you can use. I think there's a few more underneath the tray we'll look at. This is a neat little kind of overlay or a stand up that you can add to this uh, special room there. Um, again, this could be very useful to add some thematic qualities to your solo games. 
you know, if you're looking for this objective room with this magic mirror or something like that. But let's see where to start. Uh, so you do get some new shelves and furniture. Um, you do get another fireplace and you do get these new stands here that are used for these uh, these mirror standees. Let's start with the cards here and go through uh, like that. Take these out here. Okay, so here is your male uh, elf card there. And then here is our new our new uh, enemies here. So we get four new enemies. We have an ogre, we have an elven warrior, a giant wolf, which is also uh, doubles as a as, as a werewolf and an elven archer. And uh, these are the enemies here and they are again in blue. So we have, uh, so here is the archmage there. And then we have our elven archers and we have our elven warriors there. Very cool. I like these guys a lot. I think I think they did a really good job on these sculpts. Um, yeah, I think they I think they look pretty great. Very useful if you're just using these for other games. Uh, some of this, some of the toy factor in Hero Quest can be used just to uh, augment other games. And then here we have our ogres. So the ogres are pretty cool there, nicely done. And here we have our giant wolves, which are also werewolves. So these minis are actually two different enemies. And then we do get, so we have our mirrors here. So the, uh, this expansion introduces the concept of these magic mirrors, which uh, basically act like teleporting doors into other, uh, other areas of the dungeon or other quests. But really nice just to have set up. Again, these could inspire you in your random, uh, your random generation, your, your random dungeons. These could always be uh, used as inspiration for something that you are looking for. And then we do get some uh, new tokens here. So we get tokens to represent the heroes when they get turned into a werewolf. And we get some uh, item tokens for when they become a werewolf, you drop your gear and this, you drop that in a spot. And so you have to go back and I guess pick it up as you turn into a werewolf, you can't keep your armor and weapons with you. And then we also get um, a couple little NPC tokens. So you can use those to represent different kinds of NPCs. Maybe if you want to meet this little uh, dwarven miner there or something like that. And again, we get um, we get a little princess here, some kind of key that you have to find for a quest, some kind of potion, and then these magical uh, crystal balls here that you can find. And these will protect your mind from taking damage at certain points. Then we get a new kind of a treasure chest there and a new kind of a throne there, a new kind of chair to add to your dungeon furniture. And then we do get a, another tomb and this cool little alchemist table. And the alchemist table, you can, I think you can brew potions or something like that. But yeah, you get a lot of cool stuff to use, definitely. Let's go back to the cardboard here. So we've taken a look at our four enemies. Now this adds a whole bunch of new spells for the elf. So no longer with this expansion, no longer do you need to have the elf take uh, the spells from the base game. The elf can now choose three spells from this deck to take into each quest. And how I would play with this expansion and in my solo games is I would give my my wizard all of the spells from the base game. So all four elements, making the wizard a little more powerful and a little more useful. And then the elf would always choose three spells from this deck to take into the dungeon. So we have deep sleep, disappear, double image, flashback, hypnotic blaze, slow and time stop and twist wood. That's really cool because you can like uh, twist up the weapons that the enemies are using. I like that. We get a few new dread spells for Zargon to use. So we will have dispel, mind blast, mirror magic, reanimation. That is a great drawing there. People who complain about the art in this new version, I, I, I just don't see it. I know art is in the eye of the beholder and everybody has a subjective opinion on how good or how bad art is. But you guys know me, I love old school art. I'm always talking about how great black and white art looks. Uh, my game that I'm making now is probably going to be all in black and white. I love black and white line work. And I mean, I love all of the art in this new version. It's one of the things I just I cannot complain about at all. They completely nailed the look and feel of everything in HeroQuest. We get a few new treasures and we get Airwalk, Elven Cloak of Passage, Treasure Hoard, and Wolfsbane Potion. 
Look at that, three new treasures and only one of them is a potion. That is great, that is fantastic. And then we have our artifacts here. And our new artifacts are an ancient staff, a bone wand, elven boots, elven bow of vindication, elven bracers, sky orb, and a spell scroll. Again, no potions, that is fantastic. They really are kind of upping the game here, I think, in this expansion. And here we have, uh, these are our new equipment cards. We have a potion of recall, potion of speed, potion of vision, and a potion of superior restoration. Uh, so yeah, you do need some potions in the game. I understand that. But it's nice to see that this game, that this expansion gave us uh, a lot more things beyond just potions. And then here we have our quest book. Once again, uh, you will get a, an overview of everything you get, what you can buy in the alchemist shop how to use all of your new components in the game, what they stand for, what they represent. Uh, some rules clarifications. Again, a little bit of clarification on, hey, what are mind points? What's this stat that your hero has that you haven't been, <laughs> you haven't been paying attention to? And then we get into our quests. And again, the first three are solo quests for the elf. And then once we start in quest four, we get into the group quests. And uh, this quest book is pretty cool. I read through it. And it sounds like the quests get pretty interesting. But again, I think they just started piling on way, way too many enemies. And each room is kind of uh, just slows you down a little bit. Like, look at that room or look at that dungeon. It is absolutely overflowing with uh, with enemies. And I could see I could see some people getting pretty bored with just uh, rolling dice and not doing anything else but rolling dice. Uh, the monsters in this expansion, I think, take a little step back than the ones from the Frozen Horror because they don't really have any uh, special abilities listed in the bestiary. It would have been neat to see this ogre who's a big brutish guy. Uh, when I'm playing my games, I think I gave my ogre, uh, he could shove through other, uh, other, um, other models and he could displace enemies. So he couldn't get bottlenecked. I don't think the ogre has, yeah, the ogre has nothing special about him. He's a big brutish dude, or maybe uh, the ogre could grab a character and move them to another place on the map adjacent to the ogre or something like that. Uh, there are just ways that they really could have made these enemies more interesting. Okay, and finally today, we are taking a look at the newest expansion. Uh, this just came out uh, two or three weeks ago, I think, and that is Rise of the Dread Moon. And just at uh, Gen Con this year, they did introduce a new hero pack that's coming out that introduces a monk character. And the monk character sounds pretty interesting. It sounds like a little more of a complex character. I think the Avalon Hill uh, Hasbro version of Hero Quest, I think starting at this point going forward, they're going to introduce a little more complexity to the system and maybe bringing it up to where I would personally want it to be in terms of complexity. But here we have the chilling night of the dread moon is approaching. Cold metallic moonlight casts an eerie glow over Elethorn in this hero quest expansion that continues the dramatic story of treachery and civil unrest within the Elven Kingdom. So this is a direct, uh, a direct sequel to the, ma uh, the, the Mage of the Mirror. At a time uh, when Elethorn should be enjoying peace following the safe return of Princess Melandriel, Zargon's fiendish agents run amok. Led by the traitors Sir Ragnar. Playing as one of the Hero Quest's brave heroes, you must seek the aid of the cadre of Raven's Veil vale and finally free Elethorn from Zargon's vile clutches. And be wary, heroes, for Zargon forces uh, grow ever stronger with the rise of the Dread Moon. Uh, this expansion seems pretty cool. I haven't really used much of the thing, uh, much of the components from this as I am playing solo, but it seems to add a lot and you get a lot of really cool things. You do get an outdoor tile and this is a really cool tile. I love this. So this is a hero hideout. And at certain points while you are playing, the heroes can find this hideout as a place of, of refuge. And they may not be able to visit ta the town in between dungeons. And so they have to go through the dungeon looking for this hideout, looking for this place where they can rest and heal and maybe visit the alchemy table to brew potions. This is a really good use of potions. And I like this. And this is definitely something that I will be using in my solo games. I think that is super cool. I like tile overlays like that that add... Um, 
a little bit of the thematic quality to an otherwise simple game. Uh, so let's take a look at our bestiary here. So the new enemies, we will have these Magus guards. And uh, these guys are pretty cool. They do get a spell. So these are kind of like a spell swords. Again, we do get some elven archers, an elven warrior again, an elven assassin. The elven assassin mini is super cool. We get a dread wraith, a dread cultist, and a specter. So a good number of enemies. And a few of the enemies do have something special going on besides just moving and attacking. So yeah, A plus there for the, uh, for the bestiary. And then we also get some new mercenaries. And again, these mercenaries can be used either as other kind of human or elf opponents, or they can be hired by the heroes to take into a quest to help them. You will also get a knight uh, hero and uh, the knight hero here. So you'll get a new hero that the players can choose to play as. And the knight hero does have some starting skills. Why didn't they introduce skills to the other heroes in Hero Quest? This would have gone a long way to add that just that tiny, tiny little bit of customization of progress of uh, of of. Uh, just making the character your own by just adding just maybe three skills and every two quests you could pick a new skill or something. So this is super cool. Uh, I would hopefully at some point Hasbro and Avalon Hill because I know they're doing this with the monk too. The monk has some like skill cards or something, but hopefully they uh, introduce a hero pack for the original heroes that adds a little bit of complexity to them. I think that would go a long way and making hero quests really stand out. But we do get some more treasure here. So the treasure we get, we get a mysterious flower, a sacred plant, an unidentified ingredient, poison and poison. So these are regions and these are items that you can use at the alchemy table in the hideout to brew potions. So this expansion also adds a little alchemy kind of a mini game, a little some alchemy rules. Very, very cool. We have three new dread spells, channel dread, summon specters and dread lights. We have a few pieces of new equipment here. We have some caltrops, the regent kit, the smoke bomb, the hand axe and the helmet. Now I think some of these can only be found in a black market. So this expansion also adds this new shop that the heroes can go to. We get a few new artifacts here. So in the artifacts, we will have Raven's Talon, the Cloak of Shadows, the Scales of Elethorn, the Phoenix Ash, the Dawn Shield, and two new spell scrolls. And then we have a whole new deck of cards here, and these are the alchemy cards. And so these are all the different potions and things that you can brew with your regents. This is cool. This is a neat use of potions because this allows the, the heroes to make a choice to brew a potion or not. And it also gives the wizard something to do because the wizard can brew a potion at, in the hideout without having to use a regent. And that's great. It adds a little something special to that hero. So we'll get uh, here. We will have a uh, celerity, heroic brew, ogre grog, potion of battle, potion of rage, defense, dexterity, frost skin, magic, lesser healing, healing, icy strength, magic resistance, recall, Restoration, speed, strength, restora uh, superior restoration, unforeseeable fate, and vision. Very cool. A nice new deck to add to your games of Hero Quest. I enjoy that a lot. Here we have the uh, assassin there. Again, really cool pose there. Really good mini there. And the cultists. I really like these cultists. I will always take uh, cultists in games. I love fighting cultists, and I like that uh, pose there a lot. We've seen the warrior, we've seen the archer, we get a new entrance and exit door. We get a new table shape, which is nice there. So some new toy factor here. And then on the second layer here, we have all of our uh, small cardboard. So another thing that this expansion adds are these reputation tokens, which I think could also double as experience tokens if you wanted to add an experience system. And we'll talk a little bit about an experience system in the next episode. But you will also have some of these disguises that uh, the heroes can get uh, disguised and to kind of infiltrate to do espionage. Uh, these are the disguises here. These masks here. Uh, these are, are tokens, uh, moon shards, I believe they're called or something like that. that the heroes are collecting during the quest. 
And you will also have, uh, let's see, some new trap doors. So as you can see, this expansion is starting to up the complexity just a little bit and just make things a little more interesting. Here we have our uh, Magus guards there. Very similar to the knight pose. And we have our specters, or what is this guy called? I forgot what this guy was called. We have a large specter, some kind of like dread specter or something like that. Uh, dread wraith. So we have our dread wraith there, this ghostly wraith. And then we have our specters there, these kind of ghostly women. Very cool. Uh, we have uh, two new statues, and these th these could definitely be used for something in your solo games to be quest objectives or something like that. I like this kind of stuff. That's really nice. And then we have our mercenaries here. So we have our new our new uh, elven mercenaries. That, or you could also use these as an enemy group of rival heroes that are uh, questing against you if you are playing solo or something like that. But the quest book here is pretty interesting. It has a lot of stuff going on. We have our underground market. So again, a new place where the heroes can buy things. And we have our, our list of all the components, how things are used, what the uh, uh, Dread Moon spells, the new spells, uh, new artifacts, additional treasure cards, how to use the reputation tokens. And I know that people have come up with some house rules on how to use those reputation tokens in other games, going all the way back to the base game. So if you want to use those components in, in other campaigns, you can. And then here we get into all of our quests. We have the Ancient Waterways, the Smuggler's Ruin, the Dread and the Downpour. And I think these quests start to get really interesting. And I think that the uh, the, the story seems pretty cool. And it seems like uh, Zargon has a lot to, to, to keep track of, but it seems pretty rewarding for both the heroes and Zargon. So, all right, you guys, well, that was a lot of talking. Uh, that, <laughs> that's all of the expansions that I have. That's, I think, everything that's available at retail. I don't have any of the stuff from like the Mystic um, tier pledge or any of the, the uh, crowdfunding exclusives. I don't have any of that stuff. I have just been buying Hero Quest uh, at retail. And so next time we will take a look at how I play solo and a look at some of my favorite DIY things and talk just about how fun Hero Quest is to customize to make it exactly the kind of game that you want to play. We will talk to you later. Take it easy. Bye bye.